Usually, the perpetrators of violent shooting sprees are men, angry, tormented, disenfranchised. But on rare occasions, the deranged gunman is a woman. Case in point, random act of violence number eight, the Goleta Post Office murders. This is a woman who everyone uh, in law enforcement knew was trouble waiting to happen. Jennifer San Marco began her killing spree around 8 p.m. on January 30th, 2006. She went back to a neighbor's home who she had had previous altercations with and murdered the woman. After she shot Beverly Graham, Jennifer drove across town to her former place of employment, a U.S. Postal Service mail sorting facility. Then she waited. Friends and neighbors and acquaintances reported seeing her sometimes talking to herself. In the workplace, she had altercations with other employees. And in one situation prior to this event, the police had been called and deputies had, had removed her in handcuffs. That incident back in 2001 landed San Marco in a mental hospital for 72 hours. She eventually left the post office and moved to rural New Mexico in 2003. In August 2006, despite her history of mental illness, San Marco was able to purchase a 9mm pistol at a pawn shop in Grants, New Mexico. Jennifer San Marco filled out the forms, got the gun and ammunition she needed, and then proceeded to carry out her plan. Five months later, San Marco patiently sat outside the sorting facility in Goleta. Jennifer San Marco obtained access to the mail sorting facility by waiting for a vehicle to pass through the gate. And as that vehicle passed through the gate and the gate opened, she tailgated and was able to just draft right in with the person in front. She shot and killed two employees in the parking lot before entering the building. She then was just one step away by getting an ID card to being able to swipe it through the door. Then she goes inside and she starts a one by one shooting people. 80 workers were on duty that night. Some frantically dialed 911 as San Marco searched for victims. When police officers entered the building, they found Jennifer San Marco dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Five post office employees were also dead. A sixth died later from her wounds. It's the deadliest incident by a female shooter in US history. San Marco left no note and apparently spoke to no one about her plans. In so many of these cases, it, it boils down to a couple of things. One, the gun laws in this country, and two, the way we treat people with mental illness. Clearly, what we're doing now to keep dangerous people from getting guns isn't working. And that's because we have so few restrictions. And this postal shooting is another good example. A stolen tank charges through the streets of a U.S. city. A police officer is determined to stop the man behind the controls. A confrontation leaves one of them dead. Shocking act of violence number seven is the San Diego tank rampage. On the evening of May 17, 1995, a former army private named Sean Timothy Nelson entered the San Diego National Guard Armory. It was after hours, after five, evidently, and he was able to get in very easily because there were people working late and left the gate unlocked. The 35-year-old broke into one tank, then another, trying to start the engines. On the third try, Nelson succeeded. Right, he used to be a crew member in the U.S. Army of a tank, so he knew all about tanks. The only fortunate thing was this was not a loaded tank. It didn't have all its missiles and things on board. Nelson drove the 53-ton M60 tank out of the armory and onto the streets of San Diego. I can honestly say it was a parade atmosphere. Everybody was joking and laughing. And then he started mowing down cars and vans, and it wasn't so funny when he started heading for people. The driver barreled across San Diego, targeting everything in his path. Just as I got out of the driveway, he ran over my truck. And then he took out the telephone poles over there. Dozens of San Diego cops were dispatched to investigate. How do you stop a tank? And that's basically what the police were faced with. They couldn't. Their only option was to clear the streets ahead of the vehicle until Nelson veered onto the freeway. There were um, police 
cars that had stopped traffic on both sides of the freeway, so there was no risk to other human life unless he made it over the barrier and started down again. Police speculate he was heading towards a busy local hospital. It was determined that he was in a lawsuit with the hospital. Some believe that part of his rage was the fact that he had been improperly treated. When the tank became hung up on the freeway divider, police saw an opportunity and took immediate action. That was the police signal to get in there and disarm him. As soon as that happened, the police were out of their cars and they were on top of the tank getting the turret open. Using bolt cutters, four San Diego police officers forced open the hatch and found Nelson at the controls. They ordered him to surrender. He didn't comply with the authorities. They tried to beg him to stop, to stop the tank, to give himself up. San Diego police officer Rick Piner was left with no option. Uh, the decision was made to shoot. And they felt if he had gotten across the way that he would definitely kill a lot of people. Remarkably, Nelson was the only person killed that day. His 22-minute rampage destroyed 40 vehicles, damaged six miles of road, and left thousands of people without power. Tests on Nelson's blood showed he was intoxicated. This is a guy who was suicidal, had been having drug abuse problems, methamphetamine, had lost both his parents in the several years leading up to this incident. Five weeks after the incident, the San Diego District Attorney found Officer Piner was justified in using lethal force. Coming up, a Texas diner becomes a death trap.